Now, proving identities is a lot easier if you can simplify trig identities. So the previous lesson that we did, it's similar to proving identities, but this time you're going to show that the left side is equal to the right side. So you will be given two um, trig expressions. Now, in simplifying identities or proving identities, the first step tip is to choose the more complicated side and try to work from that side. Now the next tip would be to change your other trig functions into its sines and cosines transformation so you can easily cancel some of the terms or expressions that you are working on. And also try to remember your factoring techniques that you have learned in Algebra 2. It will be very helpful because when you're converting trig expressions and changing it into algebraic expressions, most often than not, you are going to factor to be able to simplify your trig function. And of course, the most important tip that I could give you is for you to practice, practice, and practice. Try to solve as many identities as you could because in that way you'll feel more comfortable and you'll be able to use the identities even easier when you practice with proving identities. So let's start our practice by using uh, basic identities that we could prove. And this is the very basic identities that we could change. The goal is for you to change this side of the identity to make it look like cosine theta. And the first step is to always work with the more complicated side. And in this case, this is your more complicated side that we're going to simplify. Now for sine theta times cotangent theta, this is easy because all we need to do is to change cotangent theta using a quotient identity into cosine theta over sine theta. And by doing so, we can cancel sine theta and we are left with cosine theta making this side equal to the other side. So therefore, we have finished our first proof. And that's how simple proving identity is. Now it's simple because our identity is simple. Now it's going to be more challenging when we are presented with a more complex identity. So this one is more complicated because we have tangent beta plus cotangent beta, and we need to prove it to be equal to secant beta times cosecant beta. Now in this case, this is my more complex side, so I'm going to simplify this using my identities. I know that tangent beta can be changed into sine beta all over cosine beta, and cotangent beta can also be changed by cosine beta all over sine beta. Now that I have two fractions, I can add them together by multiplying my denominator and multiplying the diagonals of my fractions. So sine beta times sine beta will give me sine squared beta and cosine beta times cosine beta will give me cosine squared beta. Now from my numerator using the Pythagorean identity I know that sine squared beta plus cosine squared beta is equal to 1. And by doing so I'll end up with 1 over cosine beta times sine beta which I can expand into 1, my, 1 over cosine beta times 1 over sine beta. And using my reciprocal identity for cosine and sine, I can change my first term into sec secant beta and my second term into cosecant beta, making it look like this term that we are using on our first step right here. So therefore, we have proved our identity using several steps. The um, quotient identity, for this part, and then the Pythagorean ident identity for this part, and we used the reciprocal identity to change it into secant beta times cosine beta, cosecant beta. 